Allah told Shaitan, فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا When the devil refused to do sajda, when Shaitan refused to do sajda, Allah told him, you have no right, you, it's not right for you to be arrogant here. The problem of the devil was arrogance. And that's the reason he got kicked out. فَخْرُجْ you know, إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ Get out of here. He was expelled because he was arrogant. Now, because he's angry at humanity, you expect that he would turn back to Allah and say, well, you kicked me out of here because I'm arrogant. I'm going to prove to you that they're arrogant. So they don't deserve this place either. But instead of telling Allah, oh, you think I'm arrogant? Let me show you how arrogant they are. He said, you think I'm arrogant? Once I'm done attacking them, I will prove to you not that they're arrogant, but they're not grateful. That the Jidu Aksarahum Shakirin. So it's a switch. The switch is, if the complaint against the devil is that he's arrogant, then he should prove that I'm not that different from these guys. Look, they're arrogant too. But no, he says, I will prove that they are ungrateful. What, what Qur'an has done so strategically and so wisely here, is that's actually shown us something. The opposite of arrogance, we think the opposite of arrogance is humility in the dictionary. The opposite of arrogance is what? Humility. But in the Qur'an, the opposite of arrogance is gratitude. So Allah has taught us a new opposite, you see. And so what we're learning now is, there's, it is impossible for a human being to be arrogant if they are grateful. And if they are grateful, there's no way arrogance will hurt them. And the fact that arrogance occurs, that can only be a manifestation of a lack of shukr. If shukr was there, there's no way that would have happened. So that's the first important thing. If, when someone says, hey, at least I'm not arrogant, well... From the Qur'an's definition, don't just think about arrogance as someone who thinks very highly of themselves, or is full of themselves, or is mean towards others. You, you and I have to check ourselves, how grateful are we? Because if gratitude is missing, then arrogance is there. Because th- these are opposites in the Qur'an now. These, are, these, are put, these have been placed against one another. The, the next thing that's important here, I kept telling you shaitan comes from four directions. And now we're learning, if his attack is successful, what's the goal? The goal is not for human beings to make a mistake. That's not his goal, that's not enough. Because Allah created the human beings programmed to make mistakes. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ خَطَّعُونَ All children of Adam keep on making mistakes. That's what we do. Human beings are not made perfect. We're not angels, we have choice. We have, we have shortcomings. As a matter of fact, I kept telling you, even when we do good deeds, they have shortcomings. Even when we make salah, it's not perfect. Even when we recite Qur'an, it's not perfect. Even when we do hajj, it's not perfect. When we fast, it's not perfect. So we're imperfect by definition. So the fact that we have mistakes is no surprise. The devil's mission is not to get us to make a mistake. The devil's mission is clear in this ayah. Once I attack them from these directions, I will prove to you that they are not grateful. If he can get gratitude out of us as a result of our mistakes, then he's successful. That's actually his goal, to remove the sense of appreciation of Allah and to do things out of the appreciation and the shukr to Allah, our optimistic you know, feeling towards Allah. You know, if, if you, you think about our relationship with Allah. For so many people, their relationship with Allah is based on fear. If you don't pray, Allah is going to burn you. If you don't do this, Allah is going to punish you. Your, your, your first impulse of your relationship with the one who made you is that you should be afraid of Him. And though fear is a part of my relationship with Him, the, the most powerful force inside me that should make me do something for Allah, like pray, like eat halal, like do the right thing, like stay away from evil deeds, is actually gratitude. Allah has done so much for me, the least I can do is these few things. If He can get rid of that feeling, shukr, if He can get rid of shukr, then even if I'm obeying Allah, my heart is missing something. It's not gonna have what it really, really needs to be able to, to carry on. It is out of a sense of gratitude that we are in obedience to Allah. Which is why Fatiha, that calls us to Allah's worship, iyaka na'budu, begins with gratitude. Alhamdulillah is where it begins. And then we get to worship. Because that sense of appreciation of Allah is what drives us more than anything else. But really what I wanted to spend the majority of this khutbah on is these attacks again, and how each of them, we can be protected from those attacks if we are grateful. Now let me phrase that another way. He said to Allah, I will attack them from four sides, and I'll prove to you that they're not grateful. In other words, if they were grateful, these attacks wouldn't have worked. If they're actually grateful, then the attacks will fail. If they have shukr, they're not going to succeed. 
So though I've given you long explanations of each of those directions, I'm going to walk you through each of them again briefly and describe to you in brief, in simple terms, how if we can remember to be grateful to Allah, we can actually protect ourselves from the, from the waswasa of shaitan. When, when he comes from the front, he attacks me, you and me from the front, he tempts us from what we can have. You see something in front of you, you're tempted by it, the greed. And what, what, what comes from the front is also your future. You start thinking about your future or worried about your future. Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? And sometimes you start making bad decisions, decisions that Allah won't be happy with because you're concerned about your future. If you and I have shukr inside us, deep gratitude of Allah inside us, then we know that if you look back in your past, how many times has Allah provided for you? How many times have you been and I've been in a problem and Allah has taken care of us all this time? Why do you think that all of a sudden, now Allah will not take care of you. In other words, whatever temptation comes to you from the front, if you and I can learn to be grateful for what we have, and not go towards something more than what we need, not let our greed get in the way, not let our reliance of Allah go away, but be grateful, He's taken care of me this far, why would He leave me now? This is the same thing Allah said to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Allah didn't abandon you, just because you're going through a hard time and you see something in front of you that you might just grab onto and take it because you're desperate, no. You know, you were in desperate need, he provided you before, he reminds him. Your past should remind you how grateful we should be even in times of crisis, which is why, this is the, this is the key here, if you're tempted by something that comes in front of you, then actually, be grateful to Allah by talking about the favor Allah has done for you. This is what Yusuf ﷺ did. Yusuf ﷺ was tempted by that minister's wife. She, she tried to seduce him. What was his immediate response? Ma'ad Allah, innahu rabbi ahsana mathwaya. My master has been really good to me. He, it's, you know, first he sought Allah's protection and immediately he said, Allah has been good to me, meaning he was shakir, he was grateful, immediately. And that protected him. If you can, you know, you can acknowledge the favor of Allah on you, then the attacks that come from the front, you'll be able to stay away from them.